prayer for the 2022 national and local elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective, Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language, Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us thank the Lord for gathering us this Sunday morning to celebrate the Holy Mass and to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In a special way, we pray in this Mass for peace, especially between Ukraine and Russia. We pray for those affected by the military operations. We also pray for those who have died. So that we may become less unworthy to partake of the mysteries of God's love, let us now humbly call to mind our sins. Let us ask God's forgiveness and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. 
you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks, as the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace. So in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree. Like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and start, sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about, that is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person, out of the store of goodness in his heart, produces good. But an evil person, out of a store of evil, produces evil. From the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, in many aspects of our life, we demand credibility and expertise. We do not just trust anyone. We trust only those who are credible, those who are experts, those who know what they are saying and what they are doing. If you are sick, would you just trust anyone who would tell you what medicines to take? Would you just trust anyone who is not a doctor to perform a procedure on you or to operate you? Kahit sino na lamang ba pwede mong tanungin, Uy, may sakit ako. Ano ba ang iinumin ko? O kaya, pwede bang ikaw na mag-opera sa akin? Hindi naman doktor. Wala namang alam sa medisina. Kung magpapatayo ka ng isang bahay, Ipagkakatiwala mo ba yung proyektong yon sa isang taong wala namang alam sa construction? Hindi ba hahanap ka ng marunong, ng magaling, ng may alam sa pagtatayo ng bahay? Kapag gusto mong mag-invest ng yung pera, Ipagkakatiwala mo ba yung pera mo sa isang taong walang alam sa paghawak ng pera? Hindi ba ang hahanapin mo ay yung magaling pagdating sa pera, sa investment? Kapag meron kang sari-sari store, ipagkakatiwala mo ba yung sari-sari store mo Sa isang taong alam mong nangungupit sa iyo, baka isang araw wala ng pondo ang tindahan mo. Iiwan mo ang negosyo mo sa isang taong kaya mong pagkatiwalaan. 
That is credibility. Ang kredibilidad ay yung pwede mong pagkatiwalaan, pwede mong paniwalaan, yung makatotohanan. At mahirap mabuhay sa mundong ito kung walang credibility. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is the point of Jesus in our gospel today. Jesus tells us, in this life, credibility is important. And especially in leadership, credibility is essential. Jesus says, can someone who could not see guide another person who could not see? Kung ang gumagabay sa isang taong hindi nakakakita ay yung hindi rin nakakakita, saan sila pupulutin? Saan sila dadamputin? Jesus says, will not both fall into a pit? Kung ang naggagabayan ay parehong walang paningin, baka mahulog sila sa bangin. Ang naggagabay, dapat malinaw ang paningin para hindi mahulog sa bangin. Jesus also says, how can you judge another person? How can you point out the fault of another person when you could not even see your own faults? Ang gagaling nating makita yung pagkakamali ng iba, pero yung sarili nating kakulangan at pagkakamali, hindi natin nakikita. Malabo ang ating paningin. Sabi ni Jesus, tanggalin mo muna yung piring sa iyong mata para maging malinaw ang iyong paningin. If a judge in court could not see objectively the facts, and he is biased, he is blinded by biases, prejudices, and even money, isang husgado, pero hindi nakikita ng objective yung mga ebidensya. Isang husgado, pero ang kanyang pananaw ay naiimpluensyahan ng ibang tao, ng kanyang perceptions, ng kanyang impression, o mas malala ng pera. Sa tingin ba natin makapagbibigay siya ng makatarungang husga? Jesus tells us today, be credible. Remove first the splint, the wooden beam in your own eye so that you may see clearly the splinter in your brother's eye. That is credibility. There are many ways through which we could test a person's credibility. One way is to check the person's background. Saan ba yan ng galing? Jesus tells us in our gospel, a good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. Ang mabuting puno hindi magbubunga ng bulok. At ang bulok na puno, hindi mamumunga ng mabuti. And so check the tree in order to know the fruit. Tingnan natin saan ba yan ang galing? Ano ba ang pinagmulan ano ba ang upbringing? Ano ba ang ugaling nakuha? Diyan makikita natin ang credibility kung makatotohanan at mapagkakatiwalaan. 
The book of Sirach in our first reading today even says, The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. O sa Tagalog, sa bunga ng punong kahoy, nakikilala ang ginawang pag-aalaga. Mabuti ba ang pag-aalaga ang ginawa dyan? Do natin masusukat. But looking at the background is not the only test. Because we are not trees, hindi naman tayo puno. There are good people who came from not, go, not so good families. And there are people who are not so good who came from good families. Hindi naman automatic na dahil ang pamilyang pinagmulan ay may hindi magandang nakaraan, hindi na rin mabuti ang taong ito. At hindi rin automatic na dahil mabuti ang pamilyang pinagmulan, ay mabuti na agad ang kanyang ang, ang taong ito. There are other tests of credibility. The second test, according to Jesus, is through words. Sa pamamagitan ng salita. Our gospel today ended with these words of Jesus. From the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Kung anong bukang bibig, siyang laman ng dibdib. And so our words reveal what is in our heart. Jesus said, A good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good. But an evil person out of the store of, good, of evil produces evil. Kung ang pananalita ng tao ay mabuti, mabuti rin ang kalooban. Pero kung ang lumalabas sa bibig ay masama, madumi at masama din ang nasa kalooban. Kung anong bukang bibig, siyang laman ng dibdib. At kung ano ang nasa dibdib, lalabas yan sa bibig. Our words are the windows to our soul. Kaya sa pamamagitan ng salita, masusukat natin ang tao. Pag pinakinggan natin mabuti ang kanyang sinasabi, malalaman natin kung ano talaga ang nasa kalooban. Sa pakikinig sa sinasabi ng tao sa kanyang mga salita, malalaman natin mabuti ba ang nasa kalooban o marumi ang laman ng kalooban. Sa pamamagitan ng salita, nakikilala kung sino talaga tayo. Kaya mag-iingat po tayo sa pagsasalita. Huwag basta salita lang ng salita, kasi nakikilala ka sa iyong mga salita. Our first reading also tells us, So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. Sa pangungusap ng isang tao, damdamin niya'y nahahalata. Huwag mo munang pupurihin ang isang tao hanggang hindi nagsasalita sapagkat doon mo makikilala ang tunay niyang puso at diwa. Para makilala kung makatotohanan ng isang tao, pakinggan mo muna. Sa ating pagsasalita, doon tayo nakikilala. Pero paano kang maniniwala kung hindi naman nagsasalita? 
Another test of credibility is through deeds, through actions. There are people who are very good in words, but very poor in actions. Magaling lang magsalita, nakakakumbinsing magsalita, nakakadala ang salita, pero wala namang ginagawa. Kaya hindi lamang sapat na makinig sa salita, tingnan din ang ginawa. St. Paul in our second reading today tells us, Be firm, be steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is in vain. Manatili tayo sa paggawa ng mabuti, sapagkat sa paggawa natin ng mabuti walang naaaksaya. Sa paggawa ng mabuti, nakikilala lalo kung sino ka. Sa pamamagitan ng ating gawa, nakikilala kung meron kang kredibilidad. Kung puro salita at walang gawa, mapapaniwalaan ba? Kung puro magagandang salita, pero wala namang napapatunayan sa gawa, pagtitiwalaan ba? Credibility is tested especially through actions. Tingnan mo ang nagawa na. Kung yung nagawa ay tumutugma sa salita, pwede mong pagkatiwalaan. Pero kung yung salita ay wala namang katugmang gawa, mahirap pagkatiwalaan. Sa simpleng mga karanasan po natin sa ating buhay, ganyan naman. Kapag merong nangutang sa inyo at sasabihin sa isang buwan, a 15, babayaran kita. At dumating ang a 15 at hindi naman nagbayad at nagpaliwanag sa iyo kasi maraming pangangailangan, kasi hindi ko na, na alam kung paanong makakaipon ng pagbayad at lumuluha pa nagmamakaawa. Sasabi mo, o oh, sige. At sinabi sa iyo, sa susunod na a 15, magbabayad na ako. Dumating ang susunod na a 15, wala pa rin. Sasabi mo ba sa tao, gusto mong mangutang ulit? Salita na tinutugmaan ng gawa, yan ang kredibilidad. My dear brothers and sisters, are we credible? Do we value credibility? Sa panahon ba natin ngayon, may halaga pa yung credibilidad? Parents, elders, are we credible to the younger generation? Pag tayo ba'y nagsalita at nagturo, naniniwala sila? Kapag sinabi nating palagi kang magsasabi ng totoo, huwag kang magsisinungaling, naniniwala ba ang mga kabataan, ang ating mga anak, kung tayo mismo nagsisinungaling at naniniwala sa sinungaling? Minsan meron pong kumausap sa akin na isang tatay, sabi niya, Father, may ikukwento ako sa iyo. Pinatawag kasi kami sa skwelahan bago pa ito mag-pandemic dahil dun sa aming anak na grade 5. At sabi sa amin ng teacher, nang bubuli daw sa skwela. Kaya kinausap ko yung anak ko. Sabi ko, bakit ka nang bubuli? ng kaklase mo at ang sagot sa akin ng anak ko ginagaya lang naman kita daddy 
credibility. Alam nyo, kaya po mahirap ding magsalita at magbigay ng homily. Kasi bago kami magsalita, sinusuri muna namin, ako ba'y may kredibilidad sa mga sasabihin ko? Baka ako mismo ang hindi gumagawa ng mga bagay kong sasabihin. Mahalaga ang kredibilidad. Let us be credible. Let us demand credibility. Let us value credibility or else we will all end up in the pit. Siguro mas magandang sabihin yun sa Tagalog. Pahalagahan natin ang kredibilidad. Pahalagahan natin ang makatotohanan. Pahalagahan natin ang mapagkakatiwalaan. Sapagkat kung walang credibility, pare-pareho tayong dadamputin sa kangkungan. Please stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard our Master teaching us about the state of the human heart, let the words of our prayer together flow from what fills our hearts, sincerity and goodness. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, as she brings forth the fruits of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For politicians who serve us with sincerity and honesty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those led astray by the false guides of heresy and superstition, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines, as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who died in hope of immortality, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions, we remember the people we promised to pray for. We also pray for peace in Ukraine. And we also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Father and Creator, at the altar of your merciful love, your people ask you to grant their sincere requests through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, He freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, He gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you 
as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo sa ating banal na misa ngayong umagang ito at sa inyong pagpunta dito sa Manila Cathedral. Maraming salamat po lalo na sa mga kapatid natin na matsagang nagsisimba dyan sa labas. Maraming salamat din po sa lahat ng kaisa natin sa pagdiriwang na ito sa pamamagitan ng live streaming. We wish to thank those who are joining the live streaming of this Mass through our different social media pages. Thank you for all the generous help that you have been sending to the Manila Cathedral. At maraming salamat din po sa iba't ibang mga social media platforms na nagbabahagi ng ating misa mula dito sa Manila Cathedral. Nais nice din po nating pasalamatan ang lahat ng naglingkod sa ating misa ngayon, ang ating staff, ang ating mga servants, ang uh, nag-provide ng sign language sa ating misa at sa lahat ng tumulong para sa ating pagdiriwang. Sa darating pong Miyerkules ay Ash Wednesday, March 2. Our Masses here at the Manila Cathedral on Ash Wednesday will be at 7.30 in the morning, 12.10 in the afternoon, and 5.30 in the afternoon. We will also have uh, schedules of confessions throughout the day. Please be reminded that Ash Wednesday is a day of fasting and abstinence. Araw ng pag-ayuno at abstinensya. For those who are 14 years old and above, we are asked to abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday. And for those who are 18 years old to 59 years old, we are asked to fast which means that we will eat only one full meal that day. Pope Francis also declared March 2, Ash Wednesday, as a day of prayer for Ukraine. And so let us offer our sacrifices and prayers on that day for peace between Ukraine and Russia. Narito rin po sa ating altar ang imahe ng Mahal na Birhen ng Fatima at ang blood relic ni Pope John Paul II. Manalangin po tayo sa kanila sapagkat nang magpakita ang mahal na ina sa Russia, sa, sa, sa Fatima, isa sa kanyang mga hiling ay ipanalangin ang conversion ng Russia. Pope John Paul II was also praying for peace. And so, please offer prayers to Our Lady and to St. John Paul II for peace. Naway pagpalain po ng Panginoon ang bagong linggo na ating haharapin. Nawa ay mabuhay tayo ng marangal, may kredibilidad, makatotohanan at mapagkakatiwalaan. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy now and forever. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.